Talking about reality TV shows, here's an original one. Niger Hood Rep. And you could win 20 million Naira as the first prize with a car, 10 million Naira second prize, and 5 million Naira third prize. This is how. Hi guys, have you heard of SendWave? You can now send wave from Italy, Spain, the UK, the US, Ireland, all the way to Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Ghana. Remember with SendWave, there are no fees ever. It's instant, safe, reliable, no minimum amount to transfer, and very important, yes, yes, yes. Do you know you get 99% of the time better exchange rates with SendWave? SendWave now from your mobile phone to any bank account in any of these countries. Once again, you can send wave now from Italy, Ireland, Spain, the UK, and the US to Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya. Yes, send wave now. What are you waiting for? And guess what? You've got a huge discount if you use the code FRZ or FRZ if you're from the US. Hurry, send wave now. All right, guys. Um, it's a wonderful way to start the week. In or on my couch, I have Savage Trap Queen. She's quite famous now. Had a career in the adult film industry but is now repented and she's going to tell us her story um guys don't judge her when the scriptures say do not judge they don't mean your pastors they mean each and every one of us half the things i got up to when i was a young man and into my early 20s i cannot even say them so i'm in no position to judge her neither are you the fact that many of you are where you are today is because you, you were not caught some of you some of your sins had nothing to do with sexuality some of you have stolen money some of you have defrauded people so everybody with his own little sack on their back so i think it's a good opportunity for us to listen to her as she tells us her story, and for you young girls out there and young men, you've got to be careful. Um, we're all going to learn from this. And if you have young children, you also need to listen to this. Kids go through a lot, and before you know it, they've gone further than you sent them. So ladies and gentlemen, I have Savage Trap Queen. Her real name, by the way, is Joy. Joy what? Joy, it will be Shabura Edite. That's like the Shakiri. Shakiri. Okay, so the joy is not joy like happiness. It's happiness, it's joy. Okay, I thought it was an Shakiri word. Okay. It's an English word. Fantastic. So, how old are you? I'm 24. You're 24 years old. Soon to be 25. Ah, I thought you were soon to be 24. You don't look 25. Oh, really? You don't look. Now. Where do we even start from? Tell us a little bit about your childhood. Um, growing up, I was the eye candy of the house because I was last born in my house for about six years. I got love, I got attention from everybody, my big sisters, my mom and my dad. Um, my early education background, my mom is a proprietress, so I attended her school, my primary school days, finished from there, got admission into the Lagos State Model College. Oh, your job. mom is a proprietor. Yeah, like she a owns principal. a school. Oh, she owns a school. A primary school, though. A primary school. So that's where you went to. Yeah. So okay. I was always under the watch of my family. After then, I went to Lagos State Model College, Ojo, where I did my secondary school, finished in 2011. Didn't get admission immediately. In 2013, I gained admission into Adenongo Saya College of Education, where I did my NC. I studied um, business education and accounting, alternative secretary at graduated 2016. 
and now I'm onto my degree. Sorry, I can't mention the name of my school. Now, your childhood was nice, fun, dandy, cute. For instance, like. Okay. Sorry, did you ever have, I beg your pardon, an encounter with an older uncle or relative that molested you in any way? Nope. So you had like a perfect upbringing? Yeah, I had like the perfect upbringing. Were your parents religious? Yeah, I was born into the Catholic family and I went through baptism, first holy communion, confirmation. That's like through the catechism class though. So I never had such kind of a upbringing. Okay. Um, at what age did you have your first, can I say, sexual experience? I was 18, hmm. almost 19 when it happened. And were you dating this person or was it just a, a fling or how did it happen? Well, I, that was actually my first date though. Okay, and your parents didn't allow you to date? No, because they were all about, you have to finish your school, you have to concentrate on school, don't get distracted, don't get carried away, you know? Like a proper African family. Yeah. Like, oh, if you experiment with this immediately, you're getting pregnant. <laughs> so that was like my first relationship behind my family back. Okay. And um. it happened in the way I wasn't expecting because... I was actually drugged. You were drugged? Yeah. And By the guy? Yes. And after, after he had his way with me, I realized what was going on. And even when he told me like, oh, something went wrong, he's sorry. I'm like, but you knew. I, I actually told you that I didn't want this. I just wanted it to just be all cool, not experimenting on this. I wasn't ready when it happened and that led to the end of that relationship. Mm. And I gave myself time off to now, discover myself. Did this affect myself. you in any way? Did you, did you feel, because I, I want to build a background onto okay. what could have led you into this industry. I know you probably would have said it's money or hey, I was just, you know, but I also want to see because there were all, all other young ladies who are not broke or who are quite broke and had this opportunity but didn't consider it because of one reason or the other. Do you think the way that young man took advantage of you cheapened your impression of a proper sexual experience? Yeah, uh, okay. Actually, after that, I started having this kind of feeling like, I'm holding this so sacred and I've lost it in a very Degrading disgraceful way. way. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fine, it has happened, it's happened. Let's just move on and just experiment. Yeah. How it. sacred was this to you? It was very sacred to me because initially, um, while I was still 13, 14, I wanted to become a nun. Oh, wow. Yes. So I was that, so that flipped around very quickly. <laughs> so I was like guiding and keeping and that was why I stayed away from relationship. But you know, girls have friends, girls talk. Why you should just try it. You didn't have to have sex. And my first time trying it and it went wrong. Mm. And I lost the hope that I was ever ever going to become a nun. Because I felt my okay, body has at tested that time, same and At that time, you still wanted to be a nun as of yes, 18. Yes, I still wanted to, but after getting into a relationship and I lost my what? virginity yes. in that way, like the so whole thought, hopes like my, my castle just came crumbling. And so, guys, you need to be careful. Sometimes you can ruin crazy. a girl's, a, a girl's, you can take a girl off her path simply because you want to take advantage of her. So you need to be very careful. Um, so how did it go now that the non dream was thrown into the trash? How did you? Well, I just kept living 
and living and living and living and so you I now got started into, experimenting yeah more. I got into another relationship and this time it wasn't so sacred it wasn't so sacred but I was actually in love with this person hmm. I found out he was cheating all the signs were there I had to just break away and I just concluded that, okay probably I'm not cut out for relationships yes and I just wanted to be single mm -hmm. and concentrate on school and other things I feel like I could do. Mm -hmm. Couple of the fact that I love entertainment though. Okay, so how did you now get into the industry? Which is the one million dollar question. Well, um, a friend of mine, like I said, I love entertainment. I love reality shows. I've always wanted to be part of VBN, but I never got that opportunity though. I'm sure you will now. <laughs> Hopefully. I auditioned last year, but oh, I wasn't well, they, picked. They, they, they would want to see <laughs> what it's like to live in a house with a retired actress. So, um, my friends, like, if you're close to me, I'm someone that's very open. I'm a simple person. I don't have secrets because I find it very stressful keeping one. So a friend of mine came to me like, what's up, what's up, what's up? There's this reality show we could do. I'm like, really? Will it make us popular? Will it give us money? So I was like, yes. I'm like, okay, I'm down. So they sold the idea to you? That's a reality as show. A reality it, show. Was, it never came in as a as an adult, adult movie. Yes. It was it, a reality show. It was show. a reality show. Show you the hear. So, Everything you want to do, you want to be popular, you want to get 100,000 followers for Instagram. You hear see they be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to you. So we got to the venue and I... So there was actually a venue? Yeah, um, it was a hotel though. Okay. We got to the room and I'm like, okay. She, she said it was some sort of audition. So getting there, I was waiting to be auditioned and... I saw girls in G string roaming and I'm like, so why is everybody naked if it's a reality show? And she's like, just hold on, don't worry. You have nothing to do with this and all. I'm like, fine. I'm getting there, I met this guy who happens to be the manager, the owner of the show, like it was just everything. Gripped the guy him. you had a quarrel with, you don't want to mention his name, that same guy. Yeah. Okay. That same guy. I can see there's a lot of disgust on your face. He probably didn't treat you well. No. Anyway, we're not talking about that. And I now. regretted ever meeting him. So we talked, and my friend then was like, just try it. You could be popular. You could make good money. Nobody is going to know because it's not going to be sold here in Nigeria. So after much. Talks persuasion and persuasion but how did you from almost being a nun four years before this right mm -hmm. how were you even how did this idea even seem palatable to you like i said growing after attaining the age of 18 i had a couple of relationships that didn't go well cheating and all that so, so those mm -hmm. things actually built me up into something i never wanted to be okay because looking back I'm like gosh i think i used to be a monster <laughs> so with that i had no relationship i wasn't interested in one because i was scared of getting heartbroken or getting cheated upon again or mm -hmm. some other more nasty things i'm like let me just live up as a single lady and anything that just presents anything itself. that comes Mm. I just grab it, and that was how the whole adult movie started. Mm. So, did you pass the audition? Yes, according to them. What did the audition entail? As of course. You you had to do it. Yes. So you got to the scene. You 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 left your house. I left my house. Planning to go for something that looked like or sounded like big brother yes and then you end up ended up doing it yeah after a series of tests though medically oh. i was sound it was okay no disease no stds nothing so i was clean 
So you have to be clean. Yes, you have to be clean. Now the person who, how do you verify that the person you're going to engage in this audition with? Well, um, were he, you paid for the audition? No. What? There was no payment. It was free. It was free. Wow. Now, where was your friend when the audition was going it's on? Me and this other person. In so, who was recording? Was there a camera? He man? was the one recording. Like he has this um camera stand. Like I said. He does his recruiting, he records, he edits, like he does everything on Zoom. So, um, your friend was outside, did your friend yeah. also audition? She was already into it and she didn't tell me. I never knew. Beware of friends, you! She was into it already. You people will not hear what now. Hmm. So, after the audition, I was like, oh, people like your skin comments i think it got like this subscription went high because of you yes okay then i was still like initially when i started i was using max but my skin according to him and feedback he got from his fans like oh they want to see more of this girl she's and before then i was into pageantries hmm. i was into pageantries so definitely i always wanted to keep fit flat stone work Sleep. So very, very you are sleep. regular. You 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 gym. Yeah, I, but on my own. Okay. I do that on my own. I have workouts I do on my own. So, the captain system and it got to a certain stage, and he actually convinced me to take off my max. Okay, before you had a mask. Yes, I on. do wear. I do wear max. I don't. Reveal my face. It's just my skin, and nobody will know. It's me, of course. Mm. So after much talks, it convinced now, me. Now, while you were wearing your mask mm -hmm. and doing this, was he paying you? Yes. How much was he paying you per episode, or was it a monthly retainership? Was it like a salary? So it was a one and one week kind of thing. Every week you get yes, payments. And that. It's then it was eighty thousand a week. A week. Okay. Sometimes it might extend like, oh, you didn't do well, blah blah blah. You have to stay an extra week. Mm. And sometimes we go as far as two weeks, which is still eighty thousand naira. Okay. With max. Then as then time, he said you should take your mask yeah, off. Yeah, he asked me to take off my max of that. It would increase my pay and so on, so now, was your friend wearing a mask? No. Your friend was just acting away? Yeah. Are you still friends with this person? Um, yeah, but we're not all that still, close. Is she still into this business? No, she's not. She's actually even engaged. To be married? Does the husband know? Well, I don't know. Can after, we tell you? Should, after... we, should we do baby room and tell you? <laughs> All right. Um, let's not well, spoil afterwards, afterwards, she came. After she saw my interview, she was like, "She's so sorry. She didn't know it was it would go this far." Really? Yeah, she apologized because I actually caught ties from her. I think you should maintain. I I, I never advise anyone. I caught ties to, from her. And I'm like, to gosh. not be friends with people, but you see, I have to go biblical with you. In the book of Acts, chapter fifteen, Barnabas brought. John Mark. Paul refused to have anything to do with him because John Mark deserted them at a point. So he absolutely refused to have anything to do with him and it led to a huge fight between Paul and Barnabas. So I don't see anything wrong in you. I'm sorry, this is off point. It's just my advice. Cutting, if someone could lead you like that, I think, in my opinion, if you were my sister or daughter, I'll tell you, cut this person off. This person's dangerous. But anyway, um, that's up to you. I'm sure you are. Yeah, you are uh, actually, after the apology, um, I just let be okay, civil. Nobody's yeah, perfect. be good. Nobody's perfect. But we're this not is enemies. Life. We're not friends. We're not besties. We're just. Now, yeah. was she paid as high as you, or you were the star? Um. I got later, I got to realize along the line, my pay was actually higher than. Hers. 
and jealousy set in. Oh, Fight really? Broken. Everybody went their separate ways. So she was jealous of yeah, you? Yeah, she, she started feeling jealous. Oh, well, I brought you in, you want to take my position, you know, those kind of lazy daddy ki kind of things. Uh, wow. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like the whole chaos. And it wasn't even only from her. Some other girls then, they're like, Like how wow. many girls were working in this um, production house? So many, like every time we get senior faces. And some have been working for like long. And how many guys? It's just one person, like I said, the person recording, the owner of the production. So he didn't hire any other no, guy. No, he didn't hire. So another. he was the only the one. person doing everything. So if there were forty girls, he was the only one, literally. Well, did um, he audition any men at any point? No, he never did. He never did. Most times, what people tend to see online. It's not exactly how it is. Okay. Sometimes it might just have like 20, 30 girls in the room, yeah. takes picture with them. And people out there would assume, oh, he's doing like every girl, which is not even true. Oh, okay. But he comes out, he talks about it and boasts about it. Oh, I just did like 15 girls, which is a lie. Oh, I could wow. say it's a lie because I've, I've been there. Mm, 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 so mm. out of that um, 20 girls let's 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 base on 20 girls out of that 20 girls might end up just doing two three or five max five mm. but when i say five it's not even at a goal it's not five for a day it might just break down like within the week so two, all two, two, those one. things that will sorry we all patronize <laughs> these <laughs> channels at a point in our lives <laughs> And I, I remember dating a girl who used to say I was lazy. That can't you see this guy? He's been going on for one hour. Is that how they, they, they do it? No. They uh, cut, cut, cut. Hey! Cut and merge. So it's Yahoo <laughs> they've been doing us. <laughs> hey, they mama. cut, cut, cut and merge. Like, so it now looks like. You don't, you don't do it like. You have to take a break. You have to take a break. You can't just go straight. You know? Like when I did my interview with BBC Pigeon and I said it was an act, most people had doubts like, but it's going in, it's coming out. How is it an Not. act? Like it's an act because just like normal Nollywood movies, they tend to get the right angles. Hmm. And most times you tend to repeat a scene till they get the most intriguing part of it that will catch people's oh, attention. Oh, so caught. Yes. Scene four, take 500. <laughs> so it's just like Oh that. my goodness. It's not at the goal. Mm, mm, mm. Now, there's, there's um, so much... Um, there's so many stories about drugs and uh, the adult film industry. Were you ever given any enhancement drugs or... Uh, was this gentleman using any enhancement drugs? Um, yeah, he was. He was. Did, did you see him use these drugs? Were they hard drugs or they were, were they just normal? Eh? There were hard drugs, there were pills, hard there drugs. Were serum. Yes. Hard drugs like white powder kind of hard drugs? I don't think he could afford that. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Shade. It's just the truth. I speak fact. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. But um, it cannabis, was normal green. Yeah, cannabis and all. Did that. you ever smoke cannabis with them? Yeah, I did. Did I, he make you, or had you started your own cannabis journey before you met him? Um, I I don't know if I should say yes or, or no to that. Mm. I see people. I. Most times when I go out, I see people like. Mm -hmm. So on getting there, like most of the girls that were doing it, including uh, this good friend of yours who. Yeah, they you were doing it like, oh, if you do this, you'll be very active and all. So did it? Did it affect? It was your, like a train. Did it affect your activity? Yeah. It, it did because it enhanced your performance. Yes, it enhanced the performance, but it was telling on me, God. How? It looks so tiny. Oh, okay. You lost weight. I lost weight. My color, 
and coupled the fact then like we're not like we're properly fed we're actually malnourished okay he wasn't feeding you was yeah he? it wasn't but when he comes up to the ground he posts probably that would be like the only meal for the dad you see him posting and doing okay videos. he used to live in his house not his house he doesn't own a place that i'm aware of anyway we only use hotels like okay. different hotels that could accept his activities so you go to the hotel mm -hmm. and spend how many days there a week, two weeks, sometimes it might insist. Sometimes we tend to stay even longer. Because How long is the longest time you've spent with this? A month. You've lived with this guy a month. for a month. And that was because I wanted to get my pay. And that was what caused the whole chaos between myself and him. Which at the end of the day, I still didn't even get. get the pay. How much is he still owing you? Um, as a then... Because I know he still sold some of the movies I did with him. Is that then he was just supposed to pay three hundred thousand? Wow. Which he never did and still got me assaulted not once but twice. Did he assault you personally or he sent people after you? He did personally. Then after I came out and talked about it, he started making threats sending people luckily from one time um early last year in march mm. i was hanging out with my best friend and i got a call i used to have a drop and i'm like yes who's this like i want to tell you something please please don't mention my name i'm like what is it like um this guy sent some guys they were sitting at the beach they were planning on how to kidnap me i'm like kidnap me why i don't believe this maybe you're just saying because you want to get my attention and it went as far as providing receipts as to that i'm like wow so that period i had to move away from my family house i didn't even tell my parent this like they'll be shocked to hear of this i think mm -hmm. i after everything i told my elder sister i moved away from the house for a while I had to go so, so, so to a friend's you, place. You were stay. actually living in your parents' house mm -hmm. and acting. Yes, and they never knew because whenever they asked, where are you going to? I'm like, oh, I have a modeling job. I have a nursery job. I have a fixing job. I need to. So, so there goes that um, idea that a woman who is not yet married should not live alone because she'll be promiscuous. She should stay with her parents. I well, I, really it helps. doesn't work. It doesn't well, work. It does not work. Uh, obviously, it's, we 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 it's can just agree. individual. <laughs> we can agree on that. It doesn't work <laughs> because I was still doing some stupid things I wasn't supposed to do. Right in your parents' right house. Right in my parents' house. But how house. come your parents never noticed? Because I come home, I act normal. They never check your phone. They never say, "Come, come, come." This savage trap queen said, "Where have you been for the last three weeks?" They ask, and I keep making up excuses. I keep lying to them. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, you are telling us about the point where you took your mask off. Mm -hmm. So, if you were earning 80K with the mask, how much were you supposed to earn without the mask? 100,000. Just an extra 20K. So, because of 20,000 Naira, Joy. I was naive. No, but 80,000 is not like it, it, you're getting 200K. Then I'll now say, okay. There was supposed to be an additional benefit. Which is, he was going to marry train. you at the end of the day? No. <laughs> That's why I find it hard to understand that. There was additional benefit like, oh, I'm going to change your phone. I'm going to phone? do your shopping and all that. Did he Wardrobe change your allowances. Phone? He never did though. What phone was he even supposed to give you? Obviously an iPhone. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. This is an AI moment too. But it's all good. It's all good. We're Are you learning? Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Uh, and wardrobe now, allowances, but they all never mm -hmm. came true anyway. So you never got your wardrobe allowance. You never got your phone. You never got the 300K that was supposed to be. I lost everything. Mm. Wow. And still got assaulted. And still got assaulted. Now, it's, in my opinion, 
you've been through something but you've got to be strong enough to let go of the past because if you hold on to the past it's going to ruin you have to forgive this guy and let him go it's hard right that's our first stage you've got to forgive him you can't hate him anymore listen i don't even know how i feel about this person yeah if i truly hate yeah. i don't want you to even mention his name i don't i don't even know how I, how I feel like i felt betrayed i felt used i felt stupid you see many women who come out of marriages feel exactly how you feel the only difference is they don't have a video circulating it's the crazy. internet and do you know that even after my interview it started releasing those videos for free just to get back at me so you have free content out there no wonder i was talking to one of my guys i'm not going to mention his name he was like yes do the interview yes i'm like <laughs> i'm like dude calm down he's like i know her very well she's popular I'm like, really? <laughs> well, of course you won't know that because you're not. Yeah, that yeah, I think kind God. Of <laughs> maybe, maybe 15 years ago, I might have asked you to sign an autograph, but I thank God, God also delivered me from, <laughs> from patronizing that business. Bad vices. Um, yes, yes, yes. Now, let's talk about the confession. Let's talk about you coming out what gave you the guts to come out because trust me to come out to talk about it or when i quit when i quit when it. you quit how did you even quit what what gave you the, the 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 nerve to just wake up one day and say you know what i'm done with this to be sincere with you there was there was no gain there Apart from the fact that, oh, when you type your name on Google, it's out. There was nothing so, there. You were famous. Let me even check my Google. I'm amazed that I don't know all these things. Savage Trap Queen, right? Yes. Trap. Wow. I just write Savage Trap and Queen biography or biographies on the internet. Is this you here? Yeah. Savage Trap Queen. Yes. That's me. Are That's these your my movies? my interview with um, Your View on TVC. This was the interview I did with um, BBC. Okay. And probably some other ones may just pop in. Probably Makes 100k per movie. Wow. So all this is available on the internet. I think I might have just have to scroll it for my YouTube people to see. Wow. So, there was so no you are happy with... Does it? I heard. I wasn't that, happy. Yeah. What actually instigated my acceptance into doing um, the BBC interview was he was threatening me that I was going to release my videos, was going to send it to my family and all. And I'm like. Did he eventually send it to your family? No, he did not because he wasn't expecting me to come up because. I knew I was from a very religious family, a very disciplined family. You should know, being a teacher's daughter. Mm. Now, <laughs> how did your mother's friends, how did they deal with this? How did your mother That was like this? a few days to her birthday. It was in August, the Last BBC. Year. Last two years. Last two years. The BBC interview popped out. And I'm so sorry I ruined her birthday because... How did she handle it? What happened? Did she cry? She did broke she down. Shy? It's typical for every mother yeah. not to be happy about that. Friends kept calling. Relatives kept calling. How could you, how could you let your daughter go? And she's like... And I, I felt... I felt sad, but I didn't want to show it as I then. I felt very sad because a lot of people kept blaming her. You're a teacher. Why did you like 
put sincerely my mom did all she could for me and if it was to be by my upbringing my background then trust me i like i had no business with it with adult movie at all there was no business with it so she wasn't happy she was sad that was like one of our worst birthday i wanted to give her a very nice gift but did you still I, give her the gift i couldn't because she won't even accept anything from me because so. it's like is this from those movies i'm like mm -hmm. like you're lying i'm not going to accept it and oh. my dad so precious was everywhere so what did your, how was your dad's reaction what's your dad he what did your dad do he's retired he cried my mom cried did they cry? were all shocked yes in my room i cried but i didn't want to come out like adding to their pains my mom was uh, like how could my daughter go through all this and i'm not even aware coupled with the whole assault because my face i was all bruised and battered Oh. coming back home so i just so how did you get the hook up with the bbc for the bbc interview um they reached out to me okay and i'm like okay i think this is the perfect opportunity to just take it i feel because i'm someone whatever i do i own up to it mm. Which is a good trait. If I don't, if I'm not responsible for it, I will never accept it. Let me tell you something. According to some statistics released recently, Nigerian women are the most promiscuous in Africa. According to statistics, 30% of Nigerian children are being raised by the wrong fathers. It's paternity fraud. So if all those women that are making fun of you are really as good as they are, where are they now getting these statistics from? So you are a notch better off than them because you're not hypocritical about what you do. You understand. But the environment, the society, they don't see that way. Forget what the society sees. We see the statistics. So we know that those people that are not seen are worse off half the time. So well, you need to stop judging was, yourself. Everyone was like, oh, they are saintly on my street. Sometimes oh. I'll pass and like Savi Trap Queen and trust me, there was a point in my life where So you'd be walking on your street and people would say Savi Trap Queen. Yes, and I, I like I stopped going to church. Yeah. At what stage did you stop going to church? When I joined the adult industry. Why? Because something within me just keeps saying these people might know because let's be sincere i'm a free thinker i'm open-minded but some of the things i even say in churches these days i i'm not comfortable with it stuff like this person is into the choir section of the church but this person even commits hideous sins mm, that mm. i am aware of mm. that when you see them in church on sunday yeah, they all frame and proper. <laughs> so I'm like, everyone is just being an hypocrite. But now who them catch now be thief? Mine be thief, yeah. yeah. But because mine was so open, I don't want people that I know that I'm even more sincere than to come and start judging. Because they'll be the first to jump on the gossip and they'll be the first to Now, let me ask you. When did you become famous? The BBC interview or when this guy released your movies? The BBC interview, actually. Is what made you famous? Yes. I, I feel that was what made me famous. Though. Okay, so before you could walk on your street and nobody would hail you, nobody would say anything. Nothing. So after the BBC interview... You walk on your street and is it is it hailing... Like nice hailing, hey, Savage Track Queen. Oh, look at look at. Well, look. it was mixed. Mm -hmm. It was mixed, most especially by the women. Uh, like, yeah, she don't pass. She don't pass. No more. She be. 
prostitute and Mm. Be rest assured that the ones calling prostitute inside their marriage they are practicing prostitution. Well, to so just rest your mind, <laughs> you understand. Not, yeah, I do, mm. but it's not all that easy. Like we're all sinning, we're all sinners, and we all sin differently. But no. everyone wants to be play the saint's role. Everyone wants to play the very mm. good Christian. So it wasn't even you know when you when you when you first reached out to me and said you wanted me to interview you i said i needed to get discussed with my board because i'm like what are these people going to say eventually i was like you know what i'm going to do the interview um and we're going to sit down and talk because whether you like it or not they're young girls who are probably going to be initiated into um, this industry uh, and we need to be able to to help them we also need to hear your story and also need to help you as as a person you see because the most painful thing is if you now have to go back to this industry because you don't have money or because you're hungry if you understand what I'm talking about. Now, I want us to talk about your other interview. Did, did your parents watch the BBC interview? Well, people were sending it to them, so... Initially, they didn't get to watch it. They were just phone calls and like, hmm, let's look how much your daughter is doing. So they were too scared to even watch it because they were thinking probably one of my movies were out there, inclusive in the interview. So they were too scared to even watch it. But along the line, my mom summed up courage because my mom is way stronger than my dad. But my dad doesn't accept it's not strong. <laughs> I'm saying it is not strong. Well, we just, mm, it's not strong. It's not as strong as my mom. Mm. The things my mom could hold down. I see her like the Virgin Mary because Virgin Mary held a lot of things down. Even when the angels visited her, told her about mm. the passion of Christ, the death, the cross, the nails. She kept all those things to herself. So I see the Virgin Mary in my mom. Mm. She, she, she took her time, watched the interview, and she was like, oh, you did wrong. This was all shades of wrong. And it was, it was terrible though. And when I did my interview with um, TVC on Your View, I actually tagged it my truth. I tagged it my truth because... How do you get the TVC hookup? Did you reach out to them? Or I reached they... out to them okay. because I decided I was never going to go into adult movie anymore. And I wanted other people, other teenagers, male, females, because they all, most times they reached out to me and they all want to get into this line, this lie. street, for real. I think you should actually sit down with your parents next time um, their friends make fun of them and tell them that their children are actually trying to get into this business I'm getting out of. <laughs> they always, so how do they reach out to you, young people that want to be in the industry? I don't even know, sometimes they even get through my direct line, some send me mail. So how do they say, oh, um, you are my, you are my mentor. Yes. What? So I had to, I knew doing the BBC interview encouraged what it was, what wasn't supposed to be encouraged. So I needed to set things right. Like I said, okay, I so you weren't to happy ever, with the BBC interview. Um, along the line, when I, grow more matured, more exposed, and I had to sit down and think, why did I even go into this? Not like I was hungry, not like mm. I had no clothing, not like I wasn't looking nice. You just had issues, emotional issues that and, weren't and properly to, addressed. Yeah, and I needed to explore a couple of times. I was single, a lot of heartbreaks. Those things just, just summed up into and created a dark word and a dark cloud, which as a then I was proud of. So when I came to terms to realize that these things were so, so wrong, like absolutely wrong, I felt I needed to set things straight, they mm. set things right, mm. educate teenagers my age grade, 
or what is really going on because those adult actors are not sure they won't tell the people what the exact truth is everybody's just doing for the gram you see them oh you're living la la vida lo loca sometimes then what's my colleagues will pick this guy's phone and take selfie pictures with and you just oh just let this iphone iphone x iphone x mask which is not even diaz and the risks attached to it the stigma and how it might just even damage now, how many years were you in the industry um two years what's your hiv status negative i don't know how it happened but it happened and i'm grateful to god did you check repeatedly or you just yeah i did once? i did no no not once mm. i did so i accept and you're clean no stis no infections of any sort no stds <laughs> no herpes not at all wow i don't know how it happened i, I feel okay after before the interview with tvc on your view which i tagged my truth i made sure i did another test a general test and after them because then i was already having thought like i should just stop when i did that, and i'm like even when the results were about to be out i was scared that gosh what if i have something i can't just change i was so scared and i made a covenant with god like god oh, please if it turns out the way i want it to I don't think I would ever expose myself or risk my life this way again. And luckily for me, I was all negative and extremely clean medically. So I took up the TVC interview. I reached out to them, told them I wanted to share my story and I wanted to quit porn and I want other people. Because I actually did that interview to clear the air. One, two, to also educate other teenagers like me on what life is really about. I didn't want them to fall victim of such. I wanted them to know that it's it's all shades of wrong. All shades of wrong and the dangers, the risks, because I'm sure they, they didn't know before then. And at least I was able to pull out two, three persons mm. that were already into it. And I felt satisfied because I'm not Jesus Christ. I can't save the whole world. But I could just do my little best and mm. move on. So let's talk about the TVC interview. You seem to be a, a lot more satisfied with the outcome of that interview than the BBC one. Why is that? Well, because the BBC one, it was good. But it encouraged a lot of teenagers. To want to go down that line. Yeah. Okay, but, but the, TV the TVC enlightened them. Hmm. Now, these are two truths. I never lied in any of my interviews, even in my BBC, because I, I, I was shaded that, oh, how would you just go? I remember one time there's this guy, B Naira. Yeah. When my um, BBC interview came out, B Naira was like, it's not even enough for my Gucci scarf. And I replied to him, you have that money to afford 10, 5 Gucci scarves. But what have you given back to the society? How have you helped the society? What have you done for the youth? Then you're not coming out to brag about your Gucci scarf. That same Gucci scarf you're bragging about, other teenagers want it. So they might even want, okay, let me do two, three, four, so I can also afford a Gucci scarf. You're not doing anything and you're here yeah, trying to make me feel less of a person. So I replied back. Mm. on Instagram then. Now, I was the person that did the BBC interview. There was no fraud. This was what I was into. And I spoke okay, about Okay, as it. of the time you did the BBC interview, mm -hmm. were actively yes, in the adult into it. Though I've left, in I've left the person I was working with, the guy. Yes. So I was on my own. I was mm. trying to do my own thing. Oh, you are trying to shoot your own production. Yes. Are you savage, trap queen. No, stop that. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, I'm listening. So, doing the um, TVC interview, now so TVC I played, I played both cards. Repentance. Yes, I played both cards mm. out there for the society to see. If you feel what I did, encourage you or trying to influence you into going to the wrong path, now I've played the second card. This is how it is. This is the exact truth. 
this is the naked truth unretouched mm, mm, so mm. if you still want to do whatever you want to do then you shouldn't owe me responsible that was on the influence because i told you what it's about everything like the i gave out the complete content this is it this is it this is it and i tried to discourage a lot of youth from venturing into it it's not easy trust me it's not even easy for me i have been going through a lot of tough times don't look at the hair or look at the clothes or anything i'm broke i don't have money like i don't have money now but i i have food to eat which is enough so for you're me. still with your parents now. yes i still stay with my parents under their roof mm. and i'm grateful to god for giving me such people in my life because mm. probably some other friend might just disown me or chase me out of the house and that might equally but just drive how me did it affect your relationship with your parents because um, it's actually after the TVC- it's actually helped my relationship after the bbc interview because my what dad is someone TVC? that is always distance mm-hmm. it wasn't a friend it was just this my no is no my yes is yeah do this is not seeking for your opinion mm-hmm. it does not it's not someone that interact with you or converse with you my mm-hmm. mom always do that like how are you what's going on with you like she always does that so after the bbc interview i think he came to realize he was failing mm-hmm. in his role as a father mm-hmm. so it actually enhanced to an extent my relationship with him because i never had a very good relationship with him though so now you have a better relationship with him yeah to an extent oh yes. wow that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy i'm happy for you because that, that's um a step forward now when you shot the tvc interview which mm-hmm. is your second interview wasn't it already too much for your parents as in like the bbc interview was well funny enough in, was already they knew they knew i was going for an interview but they yes. didn't know the content of it and they were scared and i remember my mom saying my mom called my elder sisters i have two elder sisters joy is going again oh hey she wants to kill me like i'm like just don't worry this time i'm in perfect control of what i'm doing and i'm sure after doing this you might be pleased though i i'm not saying i could write my wrong and the whole embarrassment the whole disgrace but just give me this time let me just do this let me just do this one more time mm. she was like god she kept calling all through i took my phone on silence and i asked them to tune in though so it was live yes this it was, was live her. Tweets were coming in, questions were coming in. Can you remember what the tweets were like? <laughs> some were nasty, mm. some were encouraging, some were like, you're very courageous to want to end and come out to talk against it because you you promoted it. And some were like, yeah, she's a failed adult actress and that's why she's poor. She's abandoned. She's looking for sympathy. She's not feeling well. That's why she came out to say this. And so we're like, kudos to you. Thanks for being an eye opener for our other youth. So plenty of stuff were coming out like that. But I recall on getting home, I called my elder sister. I told her I was on my way home. And she was like, okay. She didn't say, she just said, okay. And I'm like, what if they told them something bad? Hmm. So I just summed up courage. I didn't want to go home because I was a bit scared. But one, my instinct, like, just go. <laughs> the worst has actually happened, so just go. I don't think there will be anything worse than what I've been through a couple of months. So I go home and my sister hoped me. And she's like, I didn't know you. I didn't know you've even grown up this much. Mm. I didn't know you were this strong. And she's like, thank you. And I'm like, I should say thank you to you guys because you people were actually there for me. You never neglected me. You never left because Mister is married, happy with her kids. 
and calls were coming in our uh, in-laws like it was just everywhere but they never deserted me mm-hmm. they always they were always there for me and she was like thank you my mom woke to me and my daddy gave me a handshake your dad gave you a handshake <laughs> like you did well you did well because mm. i never thought you were this strong to do this because trust me psychologically i wasn't even stable then mm. so many things i opened my social media accounts so many thoughts good bad but so we like yeah that after some were even taunting me like oh just give her a few months she would go back and mm. i'm someone that if i decide to do something i don't go back on my words mm. when i said i'm done i'm done You're done it wasn't easy because like i said i'm not even financially stable as at now but I just needed to do the right you. thing because I felt that was the right thing though and mm. a couple of months I just kept managing. How many months have you been away from the porn industry now? I actually stopped porn early last year, January. Okay, so it's that been was a when year I, now. That was when, that was when I had, was it last year, January? Your last movie, the last movie you shot. Twenty was it twenty nineteen or twenty? I can't even remember because mm. I feel like it's so long time mm. ago. I did my TVC um, interview in July last year. Okay. So. And you had quit totally by then. Yes, I had. But I just I was trying to still observe myself, and was trying hard to fight against it. Mm. So even after my TVC interview to court. Companies kept calling. Companies? Porn companies. Oh my God. I'm like, God, what kind of problem is this? Like, I've been here all this while. You guys have reached out to me. Even some African foreign companies were calling, sending mails. We're going to offer you this money. How much was the highest offer you got at that stage? I got 2.5 million. Nine. And I was supposed to do two movies. Which was like five million, and I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. It wasn't easy. Like I kept mm-hmm. fighting and fighting. It's not going to happen. But trust me, it wasn't easy. The temptation was crazy. But I thank God for giving me the strength to go through it. I thank God for making me not fall back on my words. Mm. Thank God for giving me the strength to move on. Now. Um, before we end, um, I'm going to pray with you because Tazebot brought some grilled fish for you. So before we go and um, get the grilled fish, I want to ask, what are your plans now? Because we need to keep you out of this industry. It's, it goes beyond you saying you don't want to be in the industry. I believe that the devil knows the best way to tempt a human being. And I don't want you to fall for temptation. So what are your plans? What are you doing now? Is there any help okay. we can give you as well, a free I nation have, church? Um, I have my skincare business, which I've been selling to friends, though it's not a big kind of thing. You see yourself moving this business forward? Yes, if I'm opportune and I'm financially buoyant. Get the company registered and start with basically, let's leave the big things like the office, all those things out. Because I want you to start somewhere. Well, We uh, have all our charities in the Free Nation are overshot. So if I'm gonna give you anything, from the church, it will have to be squeezing. You understand? But I also want to help you. I don't want you to go back to this life. Now, when you leave a certain lifestyle, you have to remember that you've got to downgrade. There are some places where you used to shop where you cannot shop again. 
Yes, I, I know. If I'm talking, if you're, if I'm making sense to you, there are some things that you were doing that you are going to have to stop. Cut off, which I already done. So your money, your time, everything is going to go into this business. You're also in school. Yes, I'm still schooling. What level are you in? My three hundred level. Three hundred. My last level. result was good. What 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 grade are you on? Um, three. Three points. I just moved into three point two. Okay, so that means like you're nearly a two one. Yes. You're almost on a two one. Almost. I hope I don't get. I don't drop down again because I was wow. really distracted in my hundred level first semester and second and the whole interviews and everything. Wow. Psychologically, I wasn't really all that focused. But so you're like two one. Almost. I'm almost there. Hmm. Almost. So I just hope this new semester because. Now I'm in my 300 level. I'm we're about to come back. So, section. Um, let's talk about your your movies. How it has affected your schooling. There are lots of stories about lecturers um, asking for favors from their students so they can get grades. Has anyone ever approached you with such an offer? Well, nope. But. So maybe like, oh, let's have a relationship, let's date and all that, but no one has ever... Do they offered. know your background? Yes, they do, because most of my classmates then, that's another very touchy topic. Yeah. Then while in my 100 level, that was when the whole BBC interview went viral. Yeah. My classmates reported me to the faculty, and they're like, oh, they have to rusticate me and all. Wow. I'm a bad image of the school. Hmm. But I was lucky that I never mentioned my school, my uni name. Luckily and I'm, for you. Yeah, luckily for me. I didn't even know how that happened when it happened. I never mentioned the school name. And up to now, I still haven't. And I'm not going to do that Please anytime don't. Soon. Please don't. We want you to because have this they, education. Yes. Because if you don't have an education, I only see a ticket... I one way been, to get back to yes. where you're coming from. So they kept reporting, they kept sharing my videos, they kept writing to lecturers, even the ones I have held a relationship with, like, oh, why why do you still talk to her? She's this person, she's a bad person. So of course they knew. Most of them got to know and really And I must applaud your school for not throwing you out because yes. here's, here's what I tell um, um, schools. You see, for each person you throw out there's one person that was sent to you to be fixed that you couldn't fix. Exactly. So I was lucky I wasn't thrown out. So my lecturers, most of them, they are away. And sometimes they just come and travel with us and I would just laugh. Mm. And they, they, I think they, they saw the zeal in me mm. that I wanted to learn. Because mm. I remember them, mm. they're like, oh, this one, she's just fine for nothing. So... Just you, you're in the class where we have 1,000 people in the hall and lecture just single-handedly pick you because of what he must have heard from me. Like, I want you to present this topic at the class the following day. And I'm like, God. <sighs> so, like, it kept happening and by God's grace, I kept scaling through. And like I said, I've done my NC before now, so I have this class management. I know how to carry my students along, mm. thanks to teaching practice also, which yeah. every NC student undergo in their 200 level. So I was good at that area and I'm very outspoken. So I think that was the grace I found me. And they, they noticed I had the zeal, I wanted to learn. I was not ready to give up my education on no account. So they ended up giving me the opportunity to be there and sometimes they cancel me. So. When I hear students talking about lecturers harassing them, yes, some could be very wicked and keep threatening you. They're going to reduce your grades, but I'm just lucky that I haven't come across any of such people, such persons, and I applaud my lecturers. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Let me ask you um, a few personal questions. Okay. Marriage. Are you looking in that direction? Maybe not now, but... Yeah, I would definitely want to get married, have my kids, have a beautiful family. But not now, though, because I, I'm still a 
work in progress. I haven't been fixed like the way I should be. Mm. I'm still trying to fix up myself. And of course, I'm someone that loves to be independent. That's one of the things that drove me into the adult movie. So I won't want to go into marriage and, oh, I'll call my husband. Hello, I need matches or I need lighter. Um, mm. I would love to be independent. Let me do my things. Let me be supportive. I shouldn't rely because I feel I shouldn't rely solely on anybody mm. apart from having faith in God though and doing what needs to be done. done. Now, um, so uh, guys, if it touches your heart to help Savage Track Queen with, you know, something to start her business. Let's let her not come to us and go empty handed. Whatever little package we can package for her as a church, let's give to her. Let us also have that contribution into her life, knowing that um, we're not allowing her. Because you see, it takes, there's a physical and there's a spiritual. Uh, okay. I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to first of all read some scriptures to you so you understand that there's nothing wrong with you you're you're not a bad person um, you if there's anything I hate is hypocrisy and I'm proud to say in front of a camera that I'm sitting beside someone who I don't consider a hypocrite Thank you. you understand so um, I want you to um, shit it's gonna be all right mm? it's okay sorry it's okay it's, it's a tough battle but you're going to win I'm, I'm particularly proud of the fact that you are doing so well academically and that you also have a business sense. We're not gonna let you go to waste. I have people who come to me every Sunday that it feels I need you to help me. Help you how? Just give me money. Money to do what they don't know. Do you understand? So this venture that is my cream business, that's what I use on my skin too. We're gonna talk about that. Or let's even talk about it now. Your your business, how do they how do we get people to even see what do you sell? Beauty products? Yes, body cream and soap. Okay. So it depends on what you want. It's, it covers skincare. It's whatever you want. But I do, I'm not into lip What's balm. your Instagram handle? Savage underscore trap queen official. Official. Okay. Yes. So I'm And sorry. it's actually on private now because a lot of people, some still condemn me and I'm just trying to shield myself. And Did I condemn you? No, you did Good. not, and, and I'm really pleased. And neither does Christ. And even when I reached out to you, I, I wasn't expecting you to respond, but you did. And no, I, I was I knew so my excited. first response was like, "Wow, oh my God, what's this?" You know, but <laughs> I, I had so, to so calm so myself down and and ask the question: What would Christ have done? You see, Christ did not come to condemn the world. He came to offer himself as a living sacrifice so the world can be saved. So I'm not going to condemn you. And I'm going to share a story with you from the book of Luke, chapter 7. Uh, and I'm going to read from uh, 36. One of the Pharisees asked Yahushua, who... Um, is Christ. You know, we don't use the word Jesus in the free nation because yeah, I know. We, don't, we don't know where it originated from, but his real name was Yahushua. So one of the Pharisees asked Yahushua to have dinner with him. So he went to his home and sat down to eat when a certain immoral woman from the city heard he was eating there. She brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. She knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. And she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, 
he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Yahushua replied his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to tell you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Yahushua told him the story. A man loaned money from two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay. So he forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Yahushua said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash my, the dust off my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, as many as they are, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love, but a person who's forgiven little shows only a little love. Then Yahushua said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. So, let's pray. I think I need to go over my head. Okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity of your daughter who has decided to stay away from an immoral life. Father, whatever it takes to keep her on the straight and narrow Please provide for her. Please cleanse her thoughts. Father, give her the strength to resist the temptation of the devil that could be luring her back to where she's coming from. Give her the grace, 20 years from now, to tell a story that I'm a CEO today. I'm this, I'm that. But 20 years ago, I was an adult film actress. Cleanse her. She's not hypocritical. She has sinned. She wants your love. She wants your salvation. And she wants your forgiveness. I beg all these for her. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank so, you. You're welcome. So you're free now. It's all right. It's all right. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> so guys, let's join her as she eats some taste buds, tilapia. I know everybody who comes to visit me, except Blessing, who did not give me enough time to plan. <laughs> everybody at least gets bad as bad pepper soup. But luckily for Savage Trap Queen, uh, we got some grilled fish. So let's go get it. High five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so nice, the grilled fish. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I love grilled fish. Now, um, I was just thinking, mm -hmm. this guy that you worked for, do his parents know the line of business he's into? Yeah, they do. The mom comes to visit him. And funny enough, they are from a very religious family, Cherubin and Seraphim. The mother comes to visit him on location? Yes, in the hotel. She comes a couple of And times. she sees the girls in mm -hmm. underwear? Yeah. Has she seen you there before? Yeah, I've seen her. I've met How do you greet her? Ah, mommy and Le. Yeah, no more. <laughs> oh, now that fish looks nice. So <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, my guest for today, Savage Trap Queen. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you too, sir. Thank you, Taste Buds, as usual, for not letting me down. Talking about reality TV shows, here's an original one. Naija Hood Rep. And you could win 20 million Naira as the first prize with a car, 10 million Naira second prize, and 5 million Naira third prize. This is how. Hi guys, have you heard of Sendwave? You can now send wave from Italy, Spain, the UK, the US, Ireland, all the way to Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and Ghana. 
Remember, with SendWave, there are no fees ever. It's instant, safe, reliable, no minimum amount to transfer, and very important, yes, yes, yes. Do you know you get 99% of the time better exchange rates with SendWave? SendWave now from your mobile phone to any bank account in any of these countries. Once again, you can SendWave now from Italy, Ireland, Spain, the UK, and the US to Ghana, Nigeria, Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya. Yes, send wave now. What are you waiting for? And guess what? You've got a huge discount. If you use the code FRZ or FRZ if you're from the US, hurry, send wave now.